Hi, I'm Ben. And I'm Carl. And you're listening to Secret Sonics. Honest conversations chock full of tactical advice to help you build your dream career in music and audio. Whether it's skill development, mixing mindsets, personal branding, or work-life balance, we talk about ways to help set yourself up for success in the ever-changing music industry. Let's get started. Hi, Ben. Hi, Carl. So this is going to be a weird one because we are both exhausted. Is it going to be weird? Isn't every episode weird? Like, weird would be, like, not the exception to the rule. That's a good point. Okay, well, it's going to be qualitatively different than other episodes. I'll say that. Okay. Okay. So. Fair enough. I think, well, well, first off, you know, the fact that I don't have a microphone in front of me and I'm talking into my laptop microphone should be a little indicative of the topic we're going to get into. Mm. And no, it's not the advancements in AI noise reduction technology. We're going to talk about exhaustion and burnout because I just completely forgot my microphone over at the studio. And I don't think we've actually recorded episodes in three weeks. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. Yeah, it was like August, kids were home. I went away for a little bit. You went away, I think, also. Yeah, then then, I uh, had COVID. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it was was a lot. Not remembering my microphone. That's a pretty good sign. But I wanted to maybe not just talk about burnout or exhaustion. I I wanted to talk about, you know, trying to balance all of the things that we are doing. Because we are not alone in this. We are not the only audio professionals who also have kids or have families or have health issues or political, you know, issues like, you know, with you living in Israel and the war going on right now. Like we're not the only ones that have outside things influencing how we are in our business, what we do in our business, how we try to sustain our business in turbulent times would be a good way to good way to put it. Yes, yes indeed. And the reason that I wanted to say that this is going to be a bit of an you know experimental, slightly different episode is that the goal here, in my mind anyway, is not for us to give the listeners answers, right? Like I don't want this to become a lecture about here are five things you can do to avoid burnout, or here's five things you can do despite going through a global pandemic, or like whatever, because yeah. <laughs> that's not that's not who we are. We don't have those answers. Nobody has those answers. But this is meant to be more of an opportunity for the listener to be able to see that no matter how much you have your shit together, it's always going to be difficult. And everybody has difficulties. Everybody has a struggle with this. Right. And I think it's nobody's just a, perfect and nobody's situation is perfect. You know, even things that are outside of my control, outside of your control, no matter how much you have your shit together, outside forces are always going to be getting in the way. And I wanted this to be a bit of a discussion, not necessarily trying to give answers or advice, but maybe just talk about some of the things that we've noticed about ourselves that hurt, that help, that make things better, make things worse. We talked before hitting record about the straws that break the camel's back, right? Because that's usually what it is for most people. It's a lot of little things that just over time add up until we just feel a bit crushed under the weight of it. So, you know, what are some of the straws that break your camel's back and <laughs> what are the things that you're able to do or how do you how do you see them coming before it's too late yeah or can you see them coming before it's too late hmm i don't know if i could see them before they come i don't, I don't know if it's uh if i'm able to prevent these things i guess i could prevent these things by like setting more boundaries in advance but sometimes it's hard to prevent like I, i'm at a stage right now where i'm really trying to grow my business, because I just need to make more money because we have so many kids. <laughs> and so I'm being a little less selective about clients I'm taking on and how much projects I'm, I'm working on at the same time. And at the same time that I'm doing that, life has never been crazier because we have three kids. Three young kids too. Three, not, not three young like, yeah. kids, yeah. Between ages almost six and five months. So we're we're deep in it. We've got two kids in diapers still. And I think what made me lose it this week was drop-offs and pickups for like, we're finally have kids back in school, which is great, which gives me time to work during the day. And I'm less stressed at night when I'm hanging out with my kids. Cause I've already hopefully done most of my work and I'm not, you know, time traveling and like stressed about the office as much, but taking them there, picking them up is taking so long. 
it's just a lot to juggle and me and my wife and planning and deciding who's getting which kids when and it's become like a total thing. And I think this morning I lost it when <laughs> I took my son to the doctor for something and it turned out it was more serious than I thought it was. And it's not nothing that serious, like a skin infection, but now he's on antibiotics and now I'm like worried about my other kids getting it and if they'll get sent home from school and all that kind of stuff. And so I just like, I think that triggered me today to just be like totally overwhelmed of like, I don't know how I'm supposed to do all these things. And like nothing crazy, just trying to make a living yeah. and trying to take care of my kids at the same time. Just those two things is so much right now. And I just don't know how I'm going to do it. I don't know if I could have avoided, like, I think I've preached about setting boundaries with like, you know, not taking more work than you can actually handle at a time. But I'm at that point where I need to take all the work I can get right now because I need to just boost my revenue. So maybe I'm sure you'll have thoughts about this on from like a business perspective, but I'm I'm sort of in like a, let's see how much we can grow and where we can change things later sort of stage. And it's just all hitting me at the same time. So I'm feeling burnt out. That's my little bit. How about you, Carl? Can you see the straws coming? I can't necessarily see the straws coming, but I do have some things that I've noticed about myself that are signs of the impending doom. Or <laughs> lack of a better way to say it. All you have to do is read the paper and you're good to go, you know? Yeah, that, that's true. Well, so one thing that I found about myself is that when when I'm overwhelmed and I'm stressed out, and when I'm like long-term stressed out, you know, not just like in the moment or just for a day, when I mean like days at a time, weeks at a time, I get behind on mail. As dumb as this sounds, like I'll see mail in the mailbox, which is like right by the front door. I'll see it and I'll not want to read it. I'll not want to go through it. Even though I know most of it's junk anyway, like most of the bills I pay are on auto pay anyway. So like, it's not like I need to read these things, but they also just got to keep collecting. And especially this time of year here in the States, you know, with the political season, like I'm getting, you know, probably five or six different, you know, flyers for political candidates like every day. So right. it just gets annoying that it's there. And the same thing goes for my emails where I'll, I'll have emails that I need to respond to, but then I'll have, I probably get like maybe two or three dozen, not necessarily spam emails, but things that are not necessarily important, you know, like confirmations that my target order is ready or an update about the Studio Evolution Mastermind community that I run. Like I'll get like a notification that somebody, you know, liked something that I said or like responded to a comment. And it's not that any of these things on their own is is bad or distracting or, you know, annoying or whatever, but it's just that they build up. And then next thing I know, my inbox is like 500 messages. It's something that I've kind of found about myself that when I'm exhausted and when I'm burnt out, my instinctive way of dealing with it is by pretending that it's not happening and ignoring new things, like new potential things to add to the stress, whether or not they're actually real. So I think that's why I have a hard, like I don't want to go through the mail because I don't want to be stressed out by yeah it's like tack, that I tacking more expecting. items to your massive to do list yeah yeah and I feel like my my to do yeah yeah that's a really good way of looking at it because I feel like my my mental to do list just kind of has a physical limit you oh, know, I dude, ran out of RAM I'm, I'm the same way man my 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 wife was like by the way we have to like fill out all these forms to give to our daughter's daycare provider and I was like oh we just got it printed. I didn't know that we had to fill out, fill out forms. And even though like, it's not a big deal, it just like that one extra like level, like totally yeah. threw me for a loop. It's like, I yeah. cannot deal with this anymore. I can't deal with this today. Yeah. And, and I, I think one of the difficult parts about that too is, you know, there's all these, as somebody with ADHD and also somebody in the business realm, there are so many hacks and ways to, to be better at time management and be more productive and all these things and all these little you know, just the two minute rule and all, all these different, you know, ways to approach it that sometimes they work, sometimes they don't work. Some don't work ever. Some work great two days a week, you know, just depending on how I'm feeling and how I'm able to focus. And when the to-do list of things is, like you said, just like filling up that paper probably take you three minutes, right? Three minutes, if you, like it'll take you exactly. one minute if it's, if it's just 
10 seconds if it's just signing it, one minute if it's like filling out your address, three minutes if you have to quick look up and like sign into your account to figure out what your insurance numbers are or what, whatever. Like it's not, not a big task, but when that's just already number 73 on the pile of three minute tasks, yeah, it just feels fucking exhausting. Yeah. And even the idea of adding another three minute task feels, you know, irrationally painful to do. Yeah. I mean, that's why I wanted to bring this up today because I, I took my, my daughter to an appointment this morning and while I was, you know, waiting outside of the room for her appointment, I had some time to kill waiting for her. So I just went through my Gmail and just got rid of all of the unnecessary emails, like things that are just, you know, notification emails and those things. And it went from 570 messages down to like 30 that are actual things I need to respond to. And how'd you feel? like 15 minutes. Yeah, great. Problem is, ran out of time, and I didn't actually have a chance to respond or do anything to those ones that are actually important. So the thing is, if I don't get to it like later today, which I don't know if I'll have time to, because right after this call, I have the kids, and then I have to go teach at the college tonight. It's like I just spent all this time weeding the garden, but now I don't have any time to water the plants. I never thought of it that way, but that's probably the best way that I can describe this feeling is by the time you get through the stuff that you don't want to do, like you're so out, you're out of time and energy and motivation to do the things that you wanted to do. So you're trying to get those other things out of the way to be able to get to it. And then you don't have any time or energy left to do it. Yeah. It's uh Carl's law. <laughs> It's, uh, I don't know if we have uh, solutions for this, but you know, one thing that I think has helps me and I don't do it enough is if I have too many things like in my brain of like, there's like a massive list of, of stuff that you're thinking about you need to take care of and you're just totally overwhelmed about it is to take like 15 minutes and brain dump all of it. And I think that often will kind of relieve your brain of like percolating on all the things at the same time kind of like the idea of like you can't hold your whole calendar in your head and you can't hold all your to-do lists in your head you have to just like put it somewhere that you remember that your brain your to-do list on your phone or whatever instead of having everything in your head so sometimes just getting it getting it out can really take uh some of that weight off can i argue against that go ahead only because that is exactly the advice that i would probably have given people for most of my adult life but i will say the the caveat for that is for people I want to say for people with ADHD, but at least like for myself and for other people with ADHD that I've talked to, that is a kind of duct taping the problem thing, because what ends up happening is we brain dump, we write everything down, we feel so relieved because we got it all down, and then we lose that fucking piece of paper and (laughs) forget all those things anyway. So like, yes, is it helpful? But I feel like to me, it, it doesn't make it any better. It just makes it different instead of it being all bouncing around my head and me trying not to forget everything, I get it out of my head and then I do forget things. So it's just like, it's getting rid of the worry and the anxiety of it, but it's also like actively enabling things to fall through the cracks. So that process, like it, it works for some people, it works for a lot of people, but I guess, you know, if for any, you know, neurodivergent people listening, which is probably most of us realistically <laughs> that and i think that's one of those productivity hacks that i've seen and i've tried and for, at least for me it hasn't i don't say it does more harm than good it just does different harm and doesn't do any good right and it takes it takes 15 minutes yeah. and i mean the only thing i i will say is i have what it has worked for me is to a smaller degree when i sit down you know with a cup of coffee in the morning and i just Right up the things that I need to get done that day, doing it in like a small burst of like, okay, these are like the the files I need to send out. This is who I need to like respond to. Doing it that way, I think that that is a little bit more manageable. But I think when it's full on like existential brain dump of <laughs> saying, I've been exhausted for six months. I need to get all these things. There's too many things going on. I need to write it all down. That's when it's just like it, 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 the quantity is mm. unmanageable and on. Un, un, unhelpful you can't sweep it all under the rug yeah it'll look like a cartoon where like i don't know like the where the rug has like a giant bump under it. it looks like a ski slope or something yeah yeah i don't know if this is something that it sounds similar to your email thing i don't know if this is something that like gets you really stressed out 
people communicate with me over WhatsApp, right? But that's also how everyone communicates with me. So like, my clients communicate with me on WhatsApp because that's just what people do outside of America. In America, people still use regular text messaging, but everywhere else, everyone uses WhatsApp. So my family messages me on WhatsApp, but also my clients message me on WhatsApp. And so I'm just like constantly having to look at WhatsApp. And then I have like all these things that I know I need to do for my clients. And I leave them unread on WhatsApp so that I don't forget to get to them. Because otherwise, there's just too much information being thrown at us literally all the time. And the humans are not really developed to process this. We're sort of like expected to behave like androids in an era where we're not yet androids. I feel like, you know, yeah, like we haven't done the, you know, like Nexus stuff yet, Neuralink, whatever is happening. Like we're not there, like like the show Upload. I don't know if you saw the show Upload. I haven't, no. Uh, I think I mentioned it on the podcast. It's a, it's a, It gave me an existential crisis, but whatever. Because you, you don't have enough of those. Yeah, I don't have enough of those, right? I don't have enough real world <laughs> existential crises. Exactly. So basically we're just throwing information all the time. And so I'm using the same messaging feature that I used to talk to my family and my friends with as I'm talking to you know, my clients and leaving them unread stresses me out because like, oh, I haven't, I haven't done something. And just the fact that it's lingering and unread and it's also a personal inbox, it's just so hard to separate those two things. That's the thing that gets me really stressed out. <laughs> I don't know if you, if you feel similarly. I think I have kind of the opposite issue where I'm getting messages from everywhere and I have a hard time getting everybody to get into one, mm. one platform. It's been better. I mean, like, because generally right now, the vast majority have been kind of like trimmed down to either iMessage or Instagram. So at least there's that element. Because before, like, I mean, this is, gosh, probably like 2018-ish when I started doing more remote stuff, especially 2019. It was when I first got WhatsApp when I was first starting to work with a bunch of clients over in the UK, which is, I think, why I initially got in the first place and working with Nick DiLorenzo down in Australia. So, like, the, what what's that made sense for, for some of the artists? But then I know with Nick, we usually communicated through Facebook Messenger because we actually met through a Facebook group because Facebook was only 85% crazy uncles and things, <laughs> uh, as opposed to... Well, now I think it's like 15% crazy uncles, 85% AI bots. <laughs> so I had like, uh, there were projects that were through WhatsApp, some that were in Messenger, some of, some that were in iMessage, some were in email, some were in Instagram, like Discord, you know, I think was like a, kind of a more a more recent addition to that pile. I think that's why I could never get, I could never stick with Discord. It was just like another place of like a lot of stuff happening. I just like, my brain could not yeah. handle it. I know. And I, I feel like a, a glutton for it in a weird way, because then I was like, okay, well, I finally got all of my clients and, and my messages all down to at least like these two places. I only have two and then email, I guess. But like most, most emails are just like project specific, like revision notes. I'm pretty, I'm pretty adamant about having my clients send me revision notes and things in email. So at least like you can consider that communications, but I'm talking about like actual conversations are not happening on email. But and then I, you know, started using discord more for like the educational stuff that I do. And now that I launched the new community on like the studio evolution mastermind community, now there's that as well. And it's like, okay, well, I went from all of these different platforms down to two because I was so stressed out. And then now I've added two more and I'm trying to figure it out still. And and I think because every every platform is owned by somebody else, like it's there's no real streamlined way to do it. Yeah. That's another thing that I think is, is really stressing me out and is not, I don't have an answer for it. And I'm sure there is an answer or at least some app that somebody's going to charge me 80 bucks a month to to use to kind of put it all in one in one place. Mm. But at this point, it's something that I'm trying to actively figure out because it's adding an irrational amount of stress. Yeah. Me. Well, I just need to figure out the best way to communicate with you. So I think uh, now I know the answer. So yeah. Well, <laughs> what's funny is you're the only person I talk. Well, you're the only person I talk to regularly on WhatsApp. So, <laughs> WhatsApp is the Ben chat. <laughs> so WhatsApp stuff is like all like behind the scenes business stuff mm. for me. Damn it. There's too many platforms. <laughs> too many too many platforms, too much information. This is why we need to run away to the woods and do nothing. Yeah, Ron Swanson really had it right. 
Yeah, or we yeah, just go all did. in on the Neuralink thing and just like, <laughs> yeah, I'll just, I don't know. I'll just like blink, I'll blink some code to you and it'll be, <laughs> it'll be great. Yeah. Cause I, like what you were saying is, you know, marking things on red and so you get to it. I feel like for me, I do the same thing, but I'm looking down here on my laptop and I message, I have 294 unread messages, 234 unread discord notifications. I don't even know how many I've got in Instagram or, you know, emails at least down to 32 now. That's good. Which is great. So I got, I got like two new emails since we started this conversation, like a 20 minutes ago. I, I think honestly, that's probably one of the bigger things that's going to be plaguing us as business owners, like not just now, but I think as time continues, I feel like it's going to get worse and worse until hopefully it gets better. But just like the onslaught of communications from every angle other than doing like focus mode on your phone, it's really tough to be able to maintain it, especially when we work with clients from all over the world. You know, we're not working in silos. We're not, yeah, you know, completely out of communication. Like we have to be in communication with our clients. And yeah. one of the reasons that we love doing what we do is because we are in communication with our clients. Absolutely. Because we're developing these great relationships with them. So it's yeah. like, it is such a weird Double-edged sword. It is such a double-edged sword. And yeah, yeah. And I, I, I'm struggling with it every day. I haven't found a good way to do it, a good way to handle it. Yeah. Well, I'm glad I'm not alone. So, at least. <laughs> yeah. It's not just me that's starting to lose it. Hey everyone, friend of the podcast and Grammy-nominated engineer slash mixer Travis Ferrance hosts Progressions: Success in the Music Industry. It's a podcast exploring creativity, productivity, and growth in music. Travis has set out to document his own journey and bring those valuable lessons to you to apply to your own career. Join in each week for conversations with some of the industry's best and brightest about the mindsets and strategies that they use in their careers every day. Whether you're feeling stuck, digging for inspiration, or just looking for a mix tip, Progressions is probably for you. Go check it out wherever you get your podcasts or click the link in the show notes. Have you ever sent a proposal to an artist and they just ghost you? They never respond to it. You had a really great conversation with them. Everything seemed like they were good to go. They wanted to work with you. But then when you send over the proposal with the price on it, they just kind of disappear off into the ether. I'm teaching a free class on how to sell them on the experience of working with you and why that's so special, why you're so special. Don't worry if you can't make it to the live session of the class because we're going to be recording it so you could replay it at any time whenever you want. It's called the Platinum Pitch, Proposals Clients Can't Refuse. If you want free access to the class, just click the link in the show notes and get registered today. You know, some people, they go too far and then they like say, well, now you can only contact me via email and that's it. And I will respond once a day via email. Do you think that's like a good approach or it's too hardcore? I feel like that, that wouldn't work for me because that that would take away, they'd be throwing out the baby with the bathwater. Yeah. Yeah. But depending on, I would imagine like a mastering engineer could do that because there's not as much communication and back and forth required generally speaking as in mixing and as in like production so there are definitely going to be some some places that that does really work well but i think in, in I this in this era it's just like everybody's expecting quick communication and if you can't yeah. communicate quickly then the people are not going to be interested in working with you overall generally speaking unless yeah. you're like upper echelon you know serban level mixer kind of thing Serbian can do whatever he wants, right? It's like it's like when you're like you know when a you know a senior partner at a law firm, and then you mm -hmm. have uh, you know you have your assistant taking care of all these things for you, and you don't have to do any of that stuff, and you just like can focus on the task. But uh, until you get to that sort of level, which is there's very few people at that level in our industry, like, mm, uh, I mean, okay, very few people at like Serbian's level, yes, but I think having a virtual assistant and having you know, an assistant to do those kind of things is a lot more reasonable than you might think. Yes, but if you're someone like us who's the reason why, you know, you're working with the people you're working with is because you're able to communicate with them so well and foster those relationships, an assistant can't really do that for you. That's true. Well, I mean, but an assistant can help with some of the initial, more like logistical parts of the conversation. Sure. 
right? Like sending like file delivery things and like that, that kind of stuff. I, I see what you're saying. My point is more so that in 2024, you don't need to be in the top 1% of the top 1% of the top 1% of audio engineers to be able to afford someone to, to help you right. out with that. Sure. You know? Okay. So that, that was my point, point taken, point taken. But yeah. I, I just don't, I don't think that, yeah. Like if you're like the best of the best of the best, then people will work with you no matter how communicative you are because there there's always like a a level client artist that will work with that person but if you're not there then you then you're then you as a person are what's most important then and then you as a person must therefore communicate with said artist yes okay i'm I, but i am going to fight you on that which it's going to if anybody that knows me and knows the stuff I talk about, they're probably confused that I'm going to fight you on that. Yeah, because I but feel like this my, is about, that was like the most Carly... Uh, yeah. Carlish thing. Okay, yeah. so I'm going <laughs> to devil's advocate against the most Carlish thing Ben has yeah. ever said. Well, it's more so the point that, you know, think about mixing. If you look at the, the process of mixing, it's not just literally going through and, you know, balancing levels and doing, doing that stuff. It's also communicating with the artist to figure out what the vision is. It's making sure that they know how to send the files in the right way. It's letting them know how to send the files to you. It's getting the files imported into your session. It's communicating with them if there were any issues with the files, like anything that was, you know, unintentionally blank audio, or there's like, they accidentally had the the mastering chain on before they sent the drum stem or whatever. But then you do you do the mixing, you do the communication, and then after that, like you have to prep all the files to send stems over. You have to send them, you know, an email with the link to the backups. There are other parts of the process that don't need me necessarily. Like I, that's why I, for a very long time, have somebody prepping my my mix sessions for me. Same reason why I use you know Bounce Butler for so long to bounce mix stems, and I feel like the communications with clients, if you look at it in a similar way, there are going to be things that you can take off your plate. Right. So that's why I'm arguing against you. It's just, I, I feel like that there are the only more Carly way to take what you said and exponentially triple Carlify. Carlify, yeah. Carlify, yeah. Is yeah, yeah. to say, yes, like, yeah, the communication is the most important part. However, not every micro aspect of that relationship or the communication is like relationship based, you know? So mm. there are going to be things that are just purely logistical, purely housekeeping items that you don't necessarily need to do. So that's just, okay. You know, just that's, that's, that's my point. My point. I like to argue against my own ideas. Sometimes it's fun. Yeah, no, great. I mean, that's like uh that's like four hour work week style, you know, like how, uh, can you delegate the things that are least necessary to be done by you? I'm open to it. I don't know if I'm doing it. <laughs> I'm not doing it, but I'm open to it. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not right now. Yeah. And that's also not like, you know, that's not going to solve your burnout. Right. Because then you also have to train somebody and figure out the system. So like, that's not something to do when you're in the, you know. Yeah. In the middle of being stressed out. Okay. So here's a question for you, Carl. How, how do we solve burnout when, when we are burned out? Besides like the things that we could have pre done pre to prevent it, you know, we haven't prevented it. You're burnt out. Is this something that's, that you can alleviate quickly? Do you just need to take time off? How, how do you move past it? I mean, I don't have a good answer for that. Preventative stuff is so much easier to do, even though nobody does it, <laughs> you know, like, and I don't do it very well. I don't, I should be blocking off days, you know, I should be blocking off, you know, like one day a month where I just like have nothing and I protect that time and I just take it off and I do nothing work related whatsoever. Or I just say like, this is the day I'm going to be, I don't, I don't know what I was going to say doing like yard work or something. Cause I feel like for, for me, like that's weirdly relaxing, even though it is like physical labor, that's something that really like centers me. But I guess if I had, if, you know, if I had to tell somebody to try something specific to get out of burnout, or at least like start working their way out of burnout. I think something physical that gets them outside. I think if that's possible, like I think that's the thing that I would recommend. Like if it's just like 
whether that's going on a hike or on a walk, but like, so, and, and not just like a walk around the neighborhood, but something that's like kind of strenuous. Yeah. If you can, what I find myself is if I'm burnt out and stressed out about something and I try to say, oh, I'm going to go for a walk, I'm going to go on a walk and just think about the shit that I'm stressed out about. You know, like it's not going to, it's not, it's not going to like magically make me forget about it. I'm not going to be like, ooh, birds, you know, like th- anxiety and like stress doesn't work that way. So if it's something that is physically demanding to some degree, then at least it's going to keep you distracted. And that seems to be the most helpful for me. And I think, you know, maybe the first step to getting over burnout is to not expect burnout to be over instantly. Expecting it to take a little while to get out of burnout stage, I think is probably the first real Mm. step to, you know, getting out of it, even before you go outside, even before you do whatever steps you're going to find on YouTube. Just acknowledging that you're not going to just suddenly boop. Okay, cool. Let's go. I'm ready now. Like that's just not how it works. Have you ever read the uh, children's book, Grumpy Monkey? Are you familiar? I have not read that children's book. Are you going to do a dramatic reading of it for me? No, I won't. But, but I will say, you know, this monkey, like everyone's like, this is the best day ever. Why are you so upset? And he's like, I'm not grumpy. Blah. He runs off at the very end of the book. He's like, you know what? Like he finally admits that he's grumpy and then it starts to feel a little bit better, you know? And so sometimes you got to just admit that you are realizing that you are and not being in denial and just letting it be, you know, lessons from kids books. It's a great, it's a good kids book. That's a really good point. I didn't think of it that way, but I think that's, that's it. It's like when the thing that makes burnout so hard to get over is the fact that we're usually in denial that we're burnout. Yeah. Until we're way past, like, until we're like, yeah, very deep into the burnout. Yeah. So I guess read your signs, you know, those things that, that tell you that you're burnt out. Yeah. Also, I was, <laughs> I was just thinking about like how pissed off I am that I broke my finger playing basketball because basketball was the thing that was like keeping me sane because I was like getting out once a week with the guys, you know, sweating and playing basketball. And like, it was just so, it was like healthy and also like, just like, you know, time for myself to just do that. And then breaking my finger <laughs> has not, now I'm pissed that I have a broken finger and I can't play basketball. You know, it's like, it's like double, you know, double shitty. Yeah. But it was, so, it was such a good, it was such a good thing that was keeping me like sort of centered, even as so many things around me were falling apart <laughs> vis-a-vis like the country I live in and stuff and everything else that we've been dealing with. But yeah, yeah. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Do you do anything else besides basketball that you could be doing that? Because it does suck that it's like you can't do the the thing that you knew worked. And yeah. also, you yeah. can't play bass now. Yes. So, Another, yeah. Well, I could play bass with my middle finger and my thumb. So I could still palm mute and play not as fast. But we're not we're not there yet. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, it, it kind of all sucks. We'll see. There's there's a lot that needs to still happen, and there's probably a bunch more things I'm going to be burned out about before I get out of this burnout. But I'm accepting now that the burnout will take some time. That's the positive spin. Uh, yeah. How about you, Carl? <laughs> you know, honestly, I think today was the day that I I accepted it and acknowledged it. You know, and I, and I think it happened this morning when I was, you know, sitting uh, at my my daughter's appointment, and I'm just like. Got it. I have time. I need to kill. I I think it was the combination of you know seeing how many unready meals I had that were not actually relevant, but were still stressing me out whenever I saw them, and then that coupled with the relief I had when I got got done going through them, that was when I was like, oh, this is the relief I feel when I burn out as hell and making a little bit of progress. I think this is not a good thing that I'm so familiar with burnout that I I know what the sensation of you know slowly clawing my way out of it feels like, but that's what it felt like this morning and that was when I was like oh I got to slow the fuck down. Mm. I need to reprioritize a bit, which I've been doing over the past couple of weeks because of some, you know, life, life stuff going on, but it's good. I feel like today is the first day of trying to get myself back out of it. All right. So, yeah. So I, I thank you for allowing 
me to bring this conversation to the table. So yeah, <laughs> this sure. is my 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 uh, unofficial therapy session. This is us then, both so. like being like we are way too burnt out to make a podcast episode. So let's make a podcast episode about how we're feeling and bring the people into it. You know, and uh, you know they'll see that we're also very very much human and not aliens or robots. Yeah, it's like it's like doing it's like free jazz. Yeah, but about burnout and. It, it's it's actually 40 minutes long instead of just feeling like it's 40 minutes long. Yeah. <laughs> and that's coming from somebody with a long history of doing a lot of free jazz and avant-garde stuff. So like, I'm just making fun of myself there. Please don't any, I don't know how many avant-garde jazz listeners we have uh, in the audience, but uh, don't hate me. Yeah, I know. I've been there. I've done it. <laughs> it's all about the Mingus and the Coltrane and Let's do it. Oh, you're oh you're like oh I'm you're like, mainstream. I'm mainstream. You're, you're, you're mainstream weird weirdos. Yeah. yeah. Okay. My bad. My bad. I think I I don't know all the. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not as knowledgeable as you are in in the in the real avant garde jazz. You should start. I maybe two good places to start. I don't know why we're going here, but like listen to some. Go check out Ornette Coleman. Oh yeah, yeah, Ornette. Yeah. Skies of America. You don't think Mingus is out there? Mingus is out there. Always. I mean, don't take this the wrong way. Saying Mingus, I'm gonna start a fight. Someone's gonna punch me. Some listener is gonna like find me at Nam some year and like beat me up. But like saying Mingus is out there is like saying Lady Gaga's out there. Like, yeah, he is. And his, his stuff is phenomenal. And I love Lady Gaga. Her stuff is phenomenal. But the deeper you dig into some of like the real avant-garde stuff, the easier it is to listen to to Mingus. Okay. Who I love. Again, I love. I'm gonna like I said, I'm gonna get you know, start some fights here. Uh, but check out Ornette Coleman, Skies of America, and read behind the scenes about like composition of it. It's super weird and great. And also check out really anything John Zorn did. I think those mm. are some good like starting points okay. of like m more modern ish and also some like classic stuff. And then you'll start to go down some rabbit holes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. This is going to be the most S random podcast episode. Of Sorry, all time yeah. for Secret Sonics, but I love it. Most importantly, yeah. it was just fun for me to chat with Carl and Carl to chat with me, maybe about oh, absolutely about how our lives are are wonderful, but we're at a tough moment, and yeah, we'll, we're going to pull through it. Well, the fact that we went from talking to each other on these calls, you know, recording the podcast every week for a long like months and months and months to we haven't like been on a call together in almost a month now. Like that, that was also another big sign that something was up. Yeah. You know, kind of for both of us. I think every August is like burnout time for me because it's just, we're just with, you know, we don't have daycare and we're just constantly juggling stuff. And it just, that stuff takes a toll. You know, we're lucky that we're both present parents. You know, there, there's some couples where one partner is the main provider and the other partner is the main childcare giver or whatever. And because we're quite egalitarian, it's just a total, total juggle. So yeah, we're figuring that out. But I think every August is just going to be burnout time for me. At least until the kids are bigger. So let's end on this, Ben. Knowing that, what are some things that you want to try to do next June and July to feel a little bit more prepared when August is? Oh, boy. Man, I don't have to answer it. I'm just saying, like, maybe yeah. that's the, the question. Like, if it's the question for all the, the listeners, too, it's like, what's I know, like, August is the month for, for Ben, but for, for you listening, like, you know, what is the time that tends to be pretty rough for you? You know, whether it's crazy because of, you know, it just happens to be a really busy season for what you're doing, or maybe there's a period that usually is just uncomfortably slow and, Every year you are just kind of freaking out because you don't know how you're going to end up paying the rent that month. And I guess so the question is going to be, you know, do you have any specific recurring times like that that you can identify? And if so, what can you be doing differently in those, you know, weeks, those months leading up to it to make you better prepared to handle it? Yeah. Not just financially, but emotionally. That's a great question for the audience to think about. I'm sure everybody's got something. All right. Well, folks, you heard it here. Yes, you did. As we work through our problems, <laughs> hopefully you have thought about some problems that maybe you can prevent from getting to be too bad when those times 
I don't know if we worked through the problems. We definitely like unloaded our problems. We, we, we yeah, we just like we we <laughs> word vomited them into our audience. <laughs> we did the we, we brain dumped it. we brain dumped them. Oh God, does that mean the listeners are our new notebooks? Yeah, <laughs> for this one episode. It's a one-off. I'm sorry, everybody. No, I do feel good about this episode. Like, yes, this was us kind of unloading a bit, but I do feel like there are going to be a lot of listeners that this really resonates with. And I want you to know, listening, that that you are not alone. Yeah. You know, and and honestly, I I, I didn't intend to bring this around to, you know, like Suicide Prevention Month, mm. but it's a good reminder that you are not alone and there are people that are here to listen and, and here to help. So- Bring, bring the mood down a little bit for a moment and just, you know. Yeah, no. Just, just just remind everybody listening that, you know, you're not alone and everybody's situation is going to be different, but more people have felt ways than you realize. So there's always people to listen to you. Yeah, and people would much rather you tell them your crazy stuff and think you're weird than not tell you that stuff. So it's always good to talk to people. Yeah, on that serious note. On that serious note, thanks for listening. Thanks for talking, Ben. I appreciate you taking the taking the time and letting letting me kind of take this in a, a bit of a different direction than we usually do. It's a, I was ready for it today. It was it was a good day to do it. So thank you, Carl, for of course. So on that note, I will see you next week. Bye, Ben. Bye, Carl. We hope you enjoyed this conversation as much as we did. If anything here resonated with you, please share this or your favorite episode with a friend. And as always, we love to hear from our listeners. So find us on social media at Secret Sonics, at Ben Wallach Music, and at Carl Bonner. Until next time, bye, Ben. Bye, Carl. <laughs> that was good. I think yeah. the outro was great.